Our next panelist is Mr. Bharat Sharma, who is the founder and CEO of the Europe's leading e-commerce solution provider agency, that is Monsoon Consulting. Monsoon Consulting's commerce technology powers over 1 billion euro in transaction value per annum for their clients around the world. He's also a co-founder and promoter of fast-growing elite online fashion brand DeeratSharma.com. And Bharatji has his offices in Dublin, Ireland, London, Portugal, and Ukraine. And over the years, the business has been working with some of the leading industry clients in UK and Ireland, including brands like Cisco Food, Topline, Heat Merchant Black Hawk Networks, Kilkenny Shop, and Liverpool Foot Club. And DeeratSharma.com has its workshop and design studio in Jaipur and launching its online presence and distribution centers in Europe, UK, UK, Middle East, and India. Stage is all yours now, Bharatji. Thank you very much, Tapasya ji. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Bharat Sharma. I live in Dublin, in Ireland. And today, I will just cover three parts in my talk for these eight minutes. I will talk about my experience, the journey of my career, how I started from India, grew here, and end up finding myself in Europe and end up becoming an, an entrepreneur. Then I'll tell you a little bit more about my entrepreneurship, what I am doing, what I'm up to until now. And then for the youths, what are my observations? And based on my experience, what are the tips I can share to my younger brothers from my home country, from India? So my name is Bharat. I am originally from Jaipur, from Rajasthan. And there is a very interesting fact about myself, an MP. So today, Maninius and Chief Minister Sir said that he's mama for all the Indians living abroad. He's actually literally mama for me because my mother comes from MP. So I'm actually a domicile. My mom is from Malargar, a place right beside Mansoor. So it's a pleasure to be home. And I, every time I come to this part of the world, I found it like home. It's people, the warmth you offer, the hospitality you offer, it's absolutely amazing. So thank you very much again. So coming back to my background, um, traditional middle class family is my background. I studied in a typical Hindi medium school. Um, no one in my family ever had entrepreneurship or business background or even have ever lived in abroad. The furthest my family has probably been to is New Delhi. So it was all new for me, and I completed my engineering in computer science in 1996 from a college called Engineering College Kota in Rajasthan. From there, my first job was in India for a very small job. Then I took a government sector job, didn't like it, so quit. And my last job in India was with TCS as a software programmer. And then I was headhunted to join British Airways in London in 1998. And my last full-time job was, I was a consultant to European Union designing framework funding system. I was a project manager and technical architect for that. And then I quit. And then I founded a company called MuIQ, which was something to do with the mobile technology. I had a few uh, provisional patents on that. And I also founded IndiaRegal.com, which is a very popular education portal, very, uh, quite heavily used in Rajasthan and in, in northern part of the India. Um, I authored a book about outsourcing to India. You can buy it on Amazon today. Uh, not really recommended. And I have a couple of degrees and diplomas from ESMT Berlin, Dublin Institute of Technology. Today, as a CEO and founder of Monsoon Consulting, uh, my business is one of the leading e-commerce agency in Europe. The turnover on my business is crossing about a billion euro per year, which is about 9,100 uh, about 9,000 crores rupees. That's my clients are uh, transacting day by day in a year. We are known for some of the very complex e-commerce implementation in Europe, including projects like Liverpool Football Clubs, Primex Solutions, Cisco. They are all are global brands. I have offices in Dublin, in Ireland, in London, in Belfast, in UK, in Lisbon, in Portugal. And in Ukraine, I have office in Kiev. In my team, I have people working from more than 12 or 13 different nationalities. That includes British, Irish, Ukrainian, Portuguese, South African, Brazilians, Indians, Pakistanis, Spanish. I don't care as long as they are talented and willing to work hard, they're welcome to join my team. Today, 
I'm trying to transform my business from an IT service business to a technology platform business. So I have created a new product called Apex. As uh, Manania ministers have said, it's all about artificial intelligence, the ABCs. My platform is using artificial intelligence, chatbot, and those virtual reality, and I'm trying to create a B2B e-commerce software called Apex. It's funded by European Union, and I already have acquired clients and momentum on that as well. Uh, along with that, I have founded a new fashion brand called dhirasharma.com. My younger brother is a fashion designer, and that's the background, and I have a factory and design studio in Jaipur to back that up. So that's all about me, but the most important thing is the youth from India. What is there for them? How can they take advantage of experience and journey of people like me? So first thing I would say is we all need to be absolutely proud of brand India and the achievement we have already done. If you look at the top 25 IT companies in the world, Google, Microsoft, Adobe, MasterCards, you just name it. We have done so much better, and I think we should be really clap and celebrate that. So we, when we talk about like the topic today, we are saying that how the technology and innovation is going to influence in the youth. I think we need to flip it. The fact is, it's our youth who is influencing the innovation and technology at the global level. And that is an achievement for us, and I'm really proud of claiming that. Um, Brand India is shining, but for sure, we can do better. There's a lot of opportunities, and we are just warming up as a country, as a nation of highly talented, pride, hardworking people. So there are three things as a youth we normally aspire for. You might like to become an entrepreneur, you might like to look for a, a great job based on your skills, or you might like to go for research or academia. Doesn't matter what is your dream, but one thing I can assure you, there is a huge demand for great skills and people from India because of the brand, and that demand is outweighing the supply. The question is, how do we take advantage of that and make the best for you? and best for our great country. So there are some suggestions I have for the youth based on my learnings and observation. First thing is always be niche, be specific. When you are young and there are so many ideas are flying around, if you are in IT, you want to be a semiconductor designer, you might like to be a software engineer, you might like to be a project manager, doing everything doesn't work. You need to be expert and specialize in a specific niche and be just champion of that. You should know that subject knowledge absolutely thoroughly. Be transparent. That's one of the fundamental points as a culture when we come from India. We are quite cognizant to say no. When you go to abroad, you need to be specific and say, yes, I can do this. And no, it's not practical to do within that time frame or my skills. As long as you are transparent, you will grow your credibility, people will respect you. But if you are giving commitments and saying yes for the things which is not realistic, in the long term, your brand will devalue. And that could be a problem. When you're going for internationalization of your business, your skills, you need to localize. So make sure you adapt the language. Make sure if you are an e-commerce business coming out from India, you need to have a local payment gateway services. If you're looking at Europe or America as a viable market for you, you need to make sure you comply with the data com protection policies, the GDPRs. So we always need to look at outward, inward, as much as inward, outwards. That means you might be very smart, you might have a great skills, but you need to do the research who you are trying to reach out to, what they're looking for, what value you can achieve to them. Therefore, be research focused. And then one more thing, Jugar doesn't work, guys. I've hired a lot, a lot of engineers worldwide. One thing that comes all the time, Are chalta hai, I copied, paste the source code, it's compiling, I'm, I can deliver the functionality. It doesn't matter. 
you need to be absolutely passionate about the quality. No jugaad, please. And you will see the success you will get out of it. As uh, one of my, my colleague and I think uh, respected uh, ministers have said, network, social media, Indian diaspora is so successful. Reach out to us. Get out of the door. Just don't waste your time only doing Facebook. There is other social media like LinkedIn. You can reach out to people, ask for help, and you'll be amazed the amount of resources and facilities available to help you out internationally. Be innovative. The last one, be confident. Our youth is as much talented and probably more than any student coming out from MIT's and London School of Business. I've hired and worked with all of them. You guys are absolute talented. But you need to be confident and take your chances. That's some of the suggestions. I could give more suggestions about the policy level for government, but I'm sure they are doing a great job. We can see the momentum we have as a country. But one thing I would love to see as India, as a brand, which we have done quite good is IT services, skills. I think the next step of innovation is R&D and innovation. In the technology sector, we need to evolve. We need to go to the next level of maturity. I would like to see a Microsoft or an Apple or a, some product coming from India, and the rest of the world is paying licenses for that, not just coding. I think this is where we need to go. And then, if India needs to become a global economy, we need to be compatible with the global world. Therefore, I hope at the policy level, we are looking at becoming GDPR adequacy, data compatibility, data protection laws, so people have a trust to send work to India and use Indian platform. Education system, great. There are lots of things we could do, but I think I'm enough to, to cover this part. The one last thing, as I said, we should back ourselves. One thing, a, a, a very recent success story and a brand value is IPL. And why IPL has been so successful? Because we are taking not only the Indian youth, we are actually taking talent from Australia, the England, the best of the best breed comes in, talent get mixed up, and then they learn from each other. When it comes to career, IT, technology, I think we need to open and invite these talents from the entire world. Let them come to India, work in our offices, let our youth to work with them, do this cross-pollination, and then only we will become a real success story, in my opinion. So that ambition and confidence to open up, I think this is what I would love to see itself going. That's me done. Thank you very much. Happy to take any questions. Reach out to me if you are youth, if you're looking for help, you're always welcome. I'll give you my Thank you so much, Parash Sharma ji. As I already said, we have time constraints. So any questions? Uh, yeah, please. Well, uh, I thank uh, the speaker. It was a great speech and very, uh, very uh, uh, to the ground. Uh, I also had similar lot of things to say, but now I don't have to say because you said them. <laughs> now, um, mainly, I actually have come here. Uh, actually, I, I attended the first uh, Pravasi Bharati Divas in Delhi in uh, uh, 2003. And I feel sorry that I couldn't uh, make my ideas uh, Sir, I'm sorry if you can just simply ask the question. Yeah, the question now is, you are uh, focusing a lot on the Indian youth. I also agree with you 100% that our Indian youth has to be uh, uh, attended and uh, we, should, uh, we should plan for them. Uh, and I uh, certainly I really request. Sir, my humble request, please specific question if you have. Yeah. Uh, how can we reach with the help of the government of Madhya Pradesh and the other governments to all the youth in India? Just talking about will uh, not do. We have to reach the new entrepreneurs, new startups, which government talks about all the time. How can we reach them, we who are Pravasis, and this 
exhibition and the whole thing is done for us. How can we reach them? Can we get a list from the government? Thank you, Thank you for the question. Or please, Bharatji, please. So, um, great question, by the way. And I agree with you. We need to be accessible. Yes. We need to be available for these youths to reach out to the success stories, to the outside of the India, to Pravasi Bhartiya. Personally, I feel, in my experience, and I work with the uh, Embassy of Ireland on a regular basis, they're very open, very transparent, and I work with them on a regular basis, and we do organize mentoring sessions. When there is a trip or a college student reach out to the embassy, they forward the details to us. Maybe we could make it a bit more structured and formal environment at embassy level where they could have a, a, a room or a, or, a, or a forum, and if students or youth from India would like to reach out and join in UK or Ireland, they, that forum can invite the entrepreneurs or subject knowledge experts from the country. But I personally feel if you are an entrepreneur and if you want to get out, it's great to have these facilities, but in the world of social media, there is enough for you to show your Udhyam Shilta, Get out, do your research, LinkedIn, you will find someone. If you need help, you will get a help. Just you need to make a little bit more effort and more smart about it. So yes, facilities are good, but for entrepreneurs, we work, at, we sail across the other side of the stream and we could find it if you really want to. Thank you.